We're driving a 2023 Mazda CX-50. Mazda claims that this is a trail-worthy vehicle. We're gonna test that claim in just a little bit, but first, information explosion. The Mazda CX-50 is all new for 2023. Let us begin with interior. What I'm feeling about the interior is it's hulkish. What do you mean? You know how when Bruce Banner becomes the Hulk, he grows in size, but his shirt stays the same size? Uh -huh. I feel like that's what's happening in the interior. Like this feels very tiny, and then there's this one little vent. So you're struggling with the sense of scale. Yeah, but like now that I'm imagining that way, it's fun. I hadn't even thought about it. Now I can't unsee how small this is versus the rest of the stuff. I was more focused on the material quality, which I think is excellent in here. This is uh, the absolute highest trim, so it's not surprising, but I think there's a really uh, strong style component here. And that sophistication comes through not only in material quality and in sort of the um, simple but elegant design of the interior, but also little things like when you turn the little knobs here, there's like a nice little clicky thing, and it just feels good to interact with the vehicle. This particular one, we've got the uh, terracotta leather interior, and I just love color in an interior. There was a time when it was all just gray, black, and tan, and this feels so lively to me. And the stitching is extremely bold. It looks like the interior was injured, and then it was <laughs> repaired in stylish fashion. <laughs> In terms of space, I'm very comfortable in the front seat, and behind my preferred front seat position, there is plenty of room for me to sit. I do prefer a reclining second row seat, which this does not have, but the static recline position, I think is very comfortable. I would happily sit in the back seat of a Mazda CX-50 if I were not a control freak. How was it getting kiddo aboard? The doors open super wide. The car seat is very easy to install thanks to the um, latch covers, which remove very easily. Although, you're definitely going to lose them. Yes, yes, you'll <laughs> definitely lose the latch covers. But yeah, it's easy to get kiddo in and out. She climbs aboard, no problem. Easy to lean across and get her uh, buckled up. And then, any thoughts about the cargo area? I really liked the bag hooks that are located in the cargo area and the deep wells on either side. When I got groceries, I had some things that were glass and I did not want rolling around and those really came in handy. Overall size is uh, smaller than you find, let's say like in a RAV4, but um, I think there's plenty of space and I like the little um, releases in the back area that let the rear seat backs just flop down without having to go around to the side, assuming the front seat is far enough forward. One issue I have with the interior is right here. All of this black plastic and this metallic trim right here can be reflective uh, if you're at the right sun angle. If only I had some fly guys sunglasses easily available to uh, protect these beautiful eyes from any inadvertent reflections. I better put them on just to be safe. Phew. That's good brand integration. We're in the shade now. I'll take them off. <laughs> From a safety perspective, the NHTSA has not rated the Mazda CX-50, but it does have eight airbags standard, including knee airbags for both you and me. Oh. And then there's a complete suite of active driver assist, automatic emergency braking, lane keeping assist, though I will say that the lane keeping assist, for my taste, is a little late to intervene. I've uh, noticed on a few occasions that I'll actually be across the line before it will pull me back in. So uh, a little snappier. I'm very incompetent. But overall, what do we think? Is the Mazda CX-50 family friendly? Family friendly. Yay. Yes. Kiddo, you think it's family friendly? Yes. <laughs> Except for the smell. I don't like new cars. We'll have to bring our own odors to help get that new car out. I'm working on it, kiddo. <laughs> Rear window test. Is that it? Yeah. High five anyway. Armrest test in my comfortable eight and four driving position. I can keep both elbows on the armrest. Uh, it's a little bit of a stretch, but not so bad. And Even both... when I do this. Oh yeah, that is a real <laughs> advantage to having this divided center console cover. Outboard, very soft, uh, soft inboard. Yeah, I'm gonna go 75% on the inboard and full marks on the outboard. Hey, 
Have you subscribed to our channel yet? If you haven't, please do. At 100,000 subs, we're going to review a windowless white van. Style. Child, do you like how this car looks on the outside? Oh, that's great. Yeah, that's Zircon sand paint. It costs $400, and uh, I think uh, to keep our kiddo happy, it would be well worth it. That does lead me to a point I was going to make, though, which is that paint, there are only two free paint choices for the Mazda CX-50. All the other ones are uh, $400 or $600. But I do overall like the style of the CX-50, even though it's pretty um, heavy with the body cladding, but how else do you convey that sense of adventure without black plastic body cladding? Also, roof rails come standard, and uh, we noticed that on the uh, rear, those things that look like little vents are not vents. Though, how often do you spend time like really getting up close to the butt of your car? If you do, no judgment, but. <laughs> I also noticed that the black plastic below the front headlights is so pronounced that it creates a kind of shelf that you can use. Mm -hmm. It's a sports shelf. What would you put on it? Yeah, I threw it out to Instagram and you guys had some really good ideas. To me, the CX-50 looks very much like a Mazda, but somewhat more rugged. That is literally what it is, and that is what it looks like. But what do you guys think? Do you like the style of the Mazda CX-50, or do you not like it? Those are your only two options. <laughs> Tell us in the comments. <laughs> or a maybe. Child says maybe, so we're going to give you a maybe option. If you are curious what we're doing between YouTube videos, you can give us a follow over on Instagram in motion. Driving around the Mazda CX-50, I think it is generally comfortable. The ride quality is taut. And when you hit a single bump, it doesn't feel abusive, it feels controlled. But, you ever have the washboard that, 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 that kind of um, uh, road surface? Well, I experienced that on the drive home. And with that sort of surface, it feels a bit much. Single hits, not so bad. Multiple hits, it gets a little bit tiresome. Mm -hmm. The upside to that taut ride quality is that uh, it feels very controlled in corners, uh, very settled, very stable. And that's one of the interesting things about the CX-50 and Mazda in general right now. So what was previously a brand all about playful sportiness, they're really now about like predictability and control. And you really feel that when you're driving this thing. And one of the big ways that that expresses itself is with the steering ratio. It's a fairly slow steering ratio. Um, in fact, the steering ratio is slower than that Subaru Outback we drove a few months back. That slowness takes away any of the nervousness you might have had in uh, olden Mazdas, but it does also take away some of that kind of immediacy and that sort of uh, playful spark. But there are a couple of other interesting things happening with the CX-50 that I am fascinated by. Mazda has a system called G-Vectoring Control, and what it does is it reduces engine torque imperceptibly to put just a tiny amount of weight on the front tires when you steer. And what that does, it creates a more predictable steering behavior. As a guy who uh, liked Mazdas before, I kind of missed the fun, mm -hmm. but there is definitely something to driving a car that goes exactly where you want to aim it. And I would say that it, that is more in line with their uh, aspirations to be a more premium brand. As for the powertrain, one thing I really like about it is that there's immediate response, even though it is a turbocharged engine. And it has only six ratios for the transmission, which these days is not that many, but it doesn't feel like there's major gaps. And when you really get on it, it pulls really hard. Now this is the more powerful turbocharged engine. I'd like to drive the base engine just to see what it's all about. But Mazda's done a really good job tuning the powertrain in this one, and I suspect that might carry over to the weaker engine. Well, I'm having a predictable and stable drive, but let's see what Sweetie thinks. Evie's at the wheel. Uh, question number one, almost always, visibility. Visibility over my right shoulder, despite the high belt line, is pretty good. I think the windows are just wide. This B pillar is 
rather intrusive. And also, this is one of those vehicles where the angle of the A-pillar kind of intrudes when I'm going through corners. Yeah, it does sort of occupy that where you're looking sort of space. Yeah. And visibility-wise, you're right, that high belt line, it actually feels very much like you're sitting in a hot tub. Uh, you've got the uh, <laughs> black lower section and then the light upper section, and it really creates a uh, two-tiered vibe in here. How do you feel steering this thing around our endless windy roads? Stable is a good way to put it. I feel like when I turn, I can predict the amount of steering I will get, even though the amount of effort is higher than I'd like. And then leaving from a stop here, uh, do you feel like you've got enough power? Yes. Well, that was an easy one. <laughs> Overall, do you feel comfortable driving the Mazda CX-50? I do. Okay, I'm getting back in the driver's seat. Yeah, I think if you're looking for a premium, uh, predictable, uh, and comfortable, unless you're on the 91 freeway, kind of drive, the Mazda CX-50 is a great choice. But you know what we need to do? We need to go off-road. We are driving off-road in a Mazda. Mazda's um, eager to be a little bit more rugged as indicated by the fact that all of their SUVs moving forward will have all-wheel drive standard. On that note, um, when I was driving on road, I got an all wheel drive warning and I thought, could I possibly be driving so crazy as to have created that? Uh, apparently the answer is yes, but I thought, hmm, that's a little bit odd. That's the kind of thing I might expect when driving, um, you know, aggressively off road. But anyways, back on task. Here we are on dirt and you know what I mean? I'm going to put this in off road mode. Oh, good idea. There we go. So on the vehicle launch for Mazda CX-50, um, I got to experience basically a 30 mile an hour curve on dirt using normal mode and then that same curve using off-road mode and it was fascinating because uh, with normal mode you kind of turned in and then it turned a little bit too much and then you had to kind of take out some steering and make some adjustments and with off-road mode it was just completely consistent and predictable which is the whole Mazda philosophy that you use the modes to keep the feel consistent in a variety of terrains and um, driving experiences. Okay, we got a moment here where uh, the right rear and the front left are not touching the ground very well. Let's see if the CX-50 can get power to the ground by applying brakes uh, to the tires that are slipping to transfer power to the ones that have grip. Slipping, transferring, powering through, and it goes. Wow! Yeah, it did a really good job there. Yeah, this isn't gonna supplant our Bronco for off-road capability, but I think for uh, going off on trails and doing a little light adventuring, it's a great platform. It's doing better than I thought it would. All right, I think we're duly impressed with the Mazda CX-50's off-road chops for what it is. Let's get back on road. All right, we went off-road, moving on. Emotion factor. There's a premium quality to the materials. There's attractive exterior styling. The driving quality isn't super emotive, but I think the other factors make up for it. Yeah, and I would say too that perhaps the driving portion of the emotion factor is elevated in the off-road capabilities, which while not outrageous, I think could take you places, and that has an emotive quality. Overall, I think there is an emotion factor, but what do you guys think? If you're emotionally drawn to buy a Mazda CX-50 of your very own, click the Kelly Blue Book listing link in the description below for real listing in your area. Remarks! Let's talk about infotainment. We have the optional 10.25 inch display. That, that smaller screen, by the way, only comes on the base model. This is a really interesting setup. So it's high and wide, which is actually my preferred setup because it's not too far from your, your gaze when you're driving. Mazda has been a little bit peculiar about which screens they will let you touch. Uh, <laughs> so they really want you to use the little control knob down here. Among many systems using the control knob, it can be baffling. This is a very simple system and it makes using the control knob uh, much more palatable. I totally agree. I really struggle when it's not a touch screen, 
but I found myself able to use this one. Interestingly, Mazda does let you touch the screen if you're using Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. It's so far away, I probably wouldn't use it that much, but if you're like getting the vehicle started or trying to like pull up navigation instructions or something like that, I could see using it because sometimes it's just like, there's the thing I want to touch, just touch the thing. So I like that they give you that option. While we're talking about the screen, uh, this one has the optional 360 degree camera system, only comes on the absolute highest trim. The area devoted to the 360 cam is actually pretty small, but because it's so high res, you can still see what you're looking for. You know, like squirrels behind the car or anthropomorphized bears up front singing a song while they eat your trash. You know how mountain life works. <laughs> I like too that you can use it while you're off-roading and that it automatically pops up whenever you get too close to something. As for engine choices, there's a naturally aspirated 2.5 liter and then there's a turbocharged 2.5 liter, which is the one that we have here. If you want the maximum power out of the turbocharged engine, you have to use 93 octane and I'm not even sure where we'd find that around here. Oh, another good reason to get the turbocharged engine is that uh, it bumps tow uh, from 2,000 to 3,000 pounds and it adds a tow mode. Mm -hmm. So when you put in uh, an off-road mode, as we used previously, it keeps it consistent with how it should drive on-road. When you put it in tow mode, it uh, uses an enhanced version of that G-vectoring control to give you very similar steering feel to when you are not driving with a trailer. Also, it changes a few other things, like it'll hold gears longer and stuff so you can tow more easily. We've entered the complaint zone. Uh, when we got into this vehicle, uh, first thing I noticed is there's some slight distortion in the glass here. Now, it's a pressed vehicle. Who knows what this has been through before, um, if this was a, a prompt repair, or the deal is that little distortion in the glass uh, would drive me crazy, and that leads into a complaint that you had about that same glass. Woo! I really dislike a head-up display. It just always feels like it's distracting me and making me nauseous, and when I attempt to turn this one off, Every time I turn the car back on again, it's back up. Mm. Which leads me to another complaint. When you get in the car and turn it on, if you haven't put your seatbelt on, it beeps at you incessantly. This car is entirely too focused on safety. I'm the only one who can complain incessantly about safety. Yeah, that job is taken, Mazda CX-50. Can I make a trim recommendation? Please do. Quick reminder, the trim recommendation is which vehicle gives you the essentials you'd want in a car at the cheapest possible price. I'm gonna suggest moving up from the base trim to the 2.5 S Select package. That package costs $3,000 versus the base model, but it adds rear vents, smart key access, an extra pair of USB ports, the 10.25 inch display that we like, and 60-40 split folding rear seats. That seems like money well spent. As for the competitors, geez, there are so many. Jeep Cherokee, Kia Sportage, Honda CRV, Toyota RAV4, Bronco Sport from Ford. There are a lot of alternatives. Did we miss any remarks? If so, leave them in the comments section. Synopsis! In thinking about the essence of the Mazda CX-50, it is predictable, it is stable, it still has some capacity for fun. To me, it is the 20-year marriage of compact SUVs. Can you think of a better synopsis? If so, tell us in the comments section. If you'd like to see what we're doing between YouTube videos, give us follows over on Instagram. And if you'd like to see more of these kinds of videos, we review new cars, occasionally we talk about our Bronco, and every once in a while we do some stuff in our helicopter. If you'd like to see any of those videos, feel free to subscribe. Family, I think we've done a good job driving and reviewing the Mazda CX-50. May I have a five? I'll give you a punch. Ow, and a five? I'll just give you a five. <laughs> and you, come get your high five. Ah.